for our EC44 project, we competed in the GRACE competition uh, with a reliable PID and decision module. So the problem that we found with the baseline controller uh, was that it breaks down at higher speeds. So to remedy this, we decided to create a controller and decision modules to support the vehicle at higher speeds that can also avoid collisions. So for our approach, for our control module, we decided to complete the D portion and also implement an I portion to create a PID controller. As for the decision, we altered the way that waypoints are generated and created a waypoint path. Also, we accounted for lane curvature as well and added a stabilization state in our state machine. We also incorporated lane change correction to make sure that the car can successfully turn into the target lane. And we also factored in the obstacle type, so a vehicle versus a pedestrian, into our decision making. When it comes to completing the D component for the steering angle, the way we did this is by implementing data error. Uh, what we first did was we calculated the yaw of the, of the vehicle with respect to the vertical axis, and then calculated the tan inverse of A over B. A being the difference between the Ys of the waypoint and the current position of the vehicle, and then B being the difference in the Xs of the waypoint and the current position of the vehicle. And then after completing the D component, we also then implemented a um, I component by accumulating the proportional error of the steering angle over time. So for our decision module, originally, waypoints uh, for lane changes were just generated by taking a 90 degree angle to the center of the lane marker. However, we found that these turns were pretty sharp. So we decided to generate a waypoint path using multiple waypoints at shallower angles to generate a smoother turn. We also accounted for lane curvature in our decision. Uh, we calculated lane curvature by taking the difference in angle between the first half and second half of the center lane marker. So originally what would happen is in the scenario shown on your left, the decision module would mistakenly identify the obstacle as directly in front of it, which would cause the vehicle to turn into a lane when it did not need to. So we used the lane character to skew the thresholds and successfully be able to identify that the obstacle is in the left lane. So when it comes to the results, take it, uh, keep in mind that a lower res uh, score means a better performance. And as you can see, um, the comp competition code that we had consistently would beat the baseline score at two different speeds. The first one being 20 miles per hour, which can be seen in red. And then the second speed being 25 miles per hour in yellow. O overall, in general, you can see that the baseline uh, score becomes higher at higher speeds, which means that the baseline performs worse. Um, and as you can tell, is more unsafe compared to a competition code. So for this first video, the baseline vehicle recognizes the pedestrian as in front of the vehicle rather than being on the right lane, since it does not consider the curvature of the road. The vehicle decides to cross to the right lane as a result. Uh, this is for our vehicle. Um, in our case, we recognize that the pedestrian is in the right lane. Thus, uh, the vehicle makes a turn to the left lane to avoid the pedestrian. In this case, the baseline vehicle decides to take a right turn to the right lane, uh, but then it recognizes the original vehicle as in front Thus, the vehicle then um, decides to swerve back into the center lane, um, which would ultimately end up resulting in either a collision or slowing down of the vehicle. In our case, we take a smoother turn um, and stay in the right lane um, due to the included uh, stabilization state. And by the time that the um, vehicle, the original obstacle is seen as originally in front, um, the vehicle, our vehicle recognizes that the vehicle is, is to the left of our vehicle. So now we'll go over our final thoughts of the course. 
So what did we learn in this class? We learned all parts of the autonomous vehicle pipeline, which includes sensing, perception, decision and planning, and control. What we found most exciting was being able to put everything that we learned uh, together and basically work on a system that put together perception, decision, and control at the end of the semester. One concept that we learned in class that helped us succeed in the project was PID control daily. Because of what we learned in class, we were able to successfully complete some of the tracks in the grace competition. Thank you.